Now we've covered a lot of information up till now, but what I want to do next is I want to do a little walkthrough, a layer two, layer three walkthrough. This is going to be a summary. It's going to be a summary of a lot of the concepts that we've already learned. So let's go ahead and take, go get into this layer two and layer three walkthrough. In our scenario here, we have a machine over here that is trying to talk to a server that's in another remote network. And so what's gonna happen is we're going to send this packet, this information, this request over to this server in this remote network. The first thing that needs to happen is determining if this IP address that it's destined for is remote or local. And so what it's gonna do is it knows Number one, its own IP address, and it knows the subnet mask that it's part of. And so it has some sort of subnet mask that is associated with it. So we're just gonna say that this is a class C address, so it's a 255.255.255.0. <clears throat> and what it will do is it will do a process called anding to determine what network this is a part of. So the network that this is a part of will determine that it's a 192.168.0.0 is the network that this one is assigned to. It also knows the destination IP address. And it probably got this through something like DNS and it knows the IP address of where it's trying to reach. So it's trying to reach 192.168 dot 164 dot 24 they are on two different networks and so now it's determined that this machine over here is on a remote network once it determines that this machine is on a remote network and is not within its local network that it needs not the MAC address of the end destination, it doesn't need the MAC address of this server right here. It needs the MAC address of its default gateway. And so what it needs to do is find out what the, the default gateway MAC address is. Now it has an assigned default gateway on it. It comes in an IP address, 192.168.0.1. And so what it needs to do is find out the MAC address of this. The first thing that it can do is look onto its own ARP file and see if in, in, within its ARP table, if it's already got that information. Because if it's gotten that information in the past, it's going to already be on that machine and it's gonna keep that information for a period of time. If it sees, no, I don't know that information, I need to find out what is the MAC address that's associated with 192.168.0.1. So it sends out an ARP request to the switch asking for who belongs to 192.168.0.1. The switch is going to broadcast that message out to all of the other machines and ask, hey, who belongs to 192.168.0.1? This router right here is going to send the, the, uh, the MAC address uh, of itself back to the switch in response, which is then going to forward it on to this machine right here. So now this machine has the MAC address that's associated with the IP address, and it's gonna put it inside of its ARP table, so he has a record of that for future use. So that way he doesn't have to go through this whole uh, communication again, um, just to find out what IP address is associated or what MAC address is associated with this IP address. One more important thing to note is as this ARP request happened, as information was coming, going through and passing through it, it also looked at the source IP addresses, or excuse me, the source MAC addresses of the frames that were going through it. And it was keeping track of the MAC address and the port that it was coming in on. And that's gonna be important for forwarding future frames through this network is because now what it can do is rather than information that comes into it that's destined for a certain MAC address, rather than broadcasting it out everywhere, it knows specifically what port to send it across of.
Now, in this process of what it was creating, it's already created new frames and new packets and stuff. We kind of skipped over that part, but now comes the the packet and the that is actually going to be sent and destined for this end location. And so what it does is it now has an IP address. It knows the IP address of the, of the final destination. It knows its own IP address. So it's going to put that into this packet. It's going to put that checksum in there and that uh, going to form the time to live and how big this packet is. It's going to form all of the information that we, that we said exists within the header of the packet. So that way that information get, can get from this machine all the way to that server. Um, the next thing it needs to know, once again, is it's got that, the, it needs to assemble the frame that's going to go across Ethernet, since this is, uh, in our example here, is going to be an Ethernet line, and it's going to a certain MAC address. And so it puts in that MAC address into the frame. It also assembles that um, cyclical redundancy check at the end, that frame check sequence at the end. That's going to double check to make sure that frame has not changed or altered. It's going to put in uh, how big that frame is, going to put in all that information. And then when it puts it onto the line, it's actually going to send that preamble, which is the little ones and zeros um, that is going to set for signaling, set, set the signaling timing and the, the preamble to, to get the two devices communicating from a physical standpoint and then send that frame across to the switch. That switch is once again because those MAC has been recording those MAC addresses during this transaction and the port that it's on will take that frame and look at the destination MAC address and then send it off to this router right here and it gets to this router that router um, then is going to receive that. So these, these, this new packet and this new frame is created and then sent along its way. So once this machine sends that frame and it gets forwarded onto this router, this router is going to take a look at that layer two and look at the MAC address and say, is this, th is this frame destined for myself? And that router takes a look at it and says, well, yes, this MAC address lines up with my MAC address. This is for me. I'm gonna just do the frame check sequence, do, gonna do the cyclical redundancy check just to make sure that nothing's been altered, that nothing's been changed. It checks out. So now I can take away that layer one and layer two and just get rid of it all, all together. I don't need that information. And um, now I'm going to process the layer three and take a look at the layer three. All right, so now we have the packet that exists on this router. And this router then is going to start picking apart that packet and take a look at the destination IP address. It sees that destination IP address and it's gonna do a lookup on its routing table and determine what is the longest match or the best match to whatever destination uh, network that this is supposed to go to. In this case right here, we'll say that it understands, maybe we statically assigned that this address, this remote network right here uh, exists and it needs the next hop of this router right here. So it looks up that information on the routing table. Um, one thing that had done before this is it took a look at that checksum to make sure the header has not changed. But one thing that does change is before it sends on to its next location, it takes that time to live and increments it up or it increments it down by one. So it subtracts one from that time to live. And if that, that time to live is zeroed out, then it just gets rid of that. Uh, that packet. It doesn't send it on. But if it's still good, and in this case, it is still good, uh, it's decremented that. It needs to create a new checksum for that header because the, the header has changed. And it realizes, once again, it, had, it does that lookup to find that remote network. It figured out what the next hop is, and then it can send it along its way to the next hop. And it will um, and to send it along its way to the next hop, um, it realizes that it needs to assemble now the layer two information to actually get it onto the line, the layer two and the layer one to get it sent over.
So what the router is going to do is going to form a new frame to put it on here and send it to the next location. Now in this case right here, let's say that this is a, uh, an ethernet connection because we're used to dealing with ethernet connections. And so maybe it needs the Mac address. So it looks at its own ARP table to see what the Mac address is associated with the IP the end IP address over here. If it doesn't have that information, it will do an ARP request and send an ARP request out and get the MAC address response back for this interface um, associated with that IP address. And, uh, and so now it has the MAC address. It can go through and form that header for the frame using that destination MAC address. It uses its own source for the source MAC address, it uses its own interface. And then, um, and then it also will do that uh, frame check sequence and it will do that um, to make sure that that frame and nothing has been altered. So it'll figure that out. It'll do that signaling where it puts that little preamble on the line, the little ones and zeros to get the, the two clocks adjusted on the two interfaces so it knows what what uh, what to sync up and what to send and it will send that frame across to the other side and then it will get to this router and that router goes through the same process of taking a look is the mac address mine does has anything altered and changed on that that frame is anything different um, by doing the the uh, frame check sequence um, once it determines, yes, this is destined for me, everything's fine, I can rip away that layer one and layer two, and now I've got the packet. Okay, so that layer three packet has come into that router, that router has started processing it, it's figured out what the next hop is to the network that's associated with the destination IP address. It's done a check to check to make sure that the header has not changed or altered. It decrements the time to live. It does a new uh, frame check to because it, th that's changed now since we did the decrement of the time to live. Now it needs to get it to the next router. Let's say that this is a different protocol in here. Um, let's say it is, it is not Ethernet. Maybe this is just a point to point connection. So that actually has a different addressing scheme to it. So it assembles the different addressing scheme that's associated with the point to point protocol. And then it sends it along its way to this router right here. This router gets it and once again goes through that same process, um, the process that would be associated with point to point protocol where it checks the address and does all the checks that it needs to do. Takes once again, takes a part that uh, layer three takes the layer three out of that and takes a look at the layer three determines takes a look at the destination IP address determines when it looks up and finds it in the routing table determines that that is actually a directed connected network hey like my videos if you could hit that like button that really helps me out once it does what it needs to do with the time to live and the um, the the uh, check some uh, to make sure everything is good. Then it realizes this is the ethernet. What I need to do is a directly connected network. So I need to send it directly to the Mac address of this machine right here. It checks its ARP table to see if it knows what the Mac address is associated with that IP. If it doesn't, it does that same ARP request and request, hey, who belongs to this MAC address right here? Uh, it will get a response back. Meanwhile, this switch right here is recording where all those MAC addresses are coming from and the ports associated with it. So when this router then reassembles that frame with the MAC destination MAC address of the server, it sends it out into this network this switch looks at the destination IP ad or destination MAC address and then forwards it down the port that's associated with that MAC address and it gets to the end machine. Now that frame comes into this server. That server then takes a look and once again checks the frame to see if the MAC address matches up with its MAC address and it does. 
It does the, it checks to make sure nothing's been altered in the frame and then accepts that frame, unpacks the layer three, unpacks the layer two, un, or excuse me, unpacks the layer three, unpacks the layer four, unpacks the layer five and builds it to, okay, what is this request? And then it forms a response to that request. So there you have it. We've talked about layer two and layer three and how it travels from one location to another. But what's incredible about this is it happens very quick. It happens uh, almost instantaneously, seemingly, that it gets transferred from one location to another. It is extremely fast. And not only uh, have we transferred this request going from this computer to this server, but the server is probably replying. So if this is a, a website that we're downloading, then it's going to send a stream of packets back to this, uh, to this machine. And every once in a while, this machine will do an acknowledgement and say, yeah, I'm getting this, uh, just to make sure that it's not sending off into the blind. And this is all happening at crazy speeds. And so it's sending, it's breaking up pictures, it's breaking up data and sending them across this line and coming back to you and displaying playing it on here. So the technologies that happen out there is, is incredibly vast. There's lots of different technologies, but this is essentially how the communication happens. So now at this point in time, you can see how we can transfer data clear across this planet and how the internet works by this model right here. So thanks for joining me. I appreciate it.